ಜಗದ ಪ್ರಳಯೋದಯೋ ತಂ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಚಕ್ರ ವಿಭವ ಪ್ರಭವ ಶಂಕರ ನಮಃ ತಂ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಚಕ್ರ ವಿಭವ ಪ್ರಭವ ಶಂಕರ ನಮಃ ಸುವಂತ ಸೂತ್ರ there was the mention of jagrat swapna and the sushupti the three stages when uh, we distinguish three three stage the stages as the distinguished experiences then the experience of turiya can be achieved so that is called the fourth stage as the awareness of all other stages the integral awareness of all the stages so this way the experience of turiya directly that uh, it is mentioned in this seventh sutra eight sutra about the waking state jnanam jagrat so when the subject is in contact with the object that is called waking state then comes a dream state the dreaming so it is said sapno vikalpaha so dream state is the impressions of the previous experience that is to say the experience of waking state so that's called vikalpa and those impressions are uh in comparison with waking state they are false notions the objects are not uh, gross they are not real but uh, we experience as objects outside there so that is called vikalpa sapna see uh, vikalpa we can say the seemingly objects are there but actually is not that so therefore it is called vikalpa and then comes the third state sushupti aviveko maya saushuptam aviveko maya saushuptam aviveko maya saushuptam aviveko maya saushuptam so the maya saushuptam is one word so here it is separated we have connected it as one word so, aviveka aviveka viveka means discrimination aviveka mean non discrimination so non discrimination of object and subject because we are discussing about the object and subject from waking state so here in this stage there is no discrimination no awareness of object and subject so where there is an absence of difference between object and subject and the thinker and thought seer and seen so nothing is discriminated therefore it is aviveka but the deeper experience the profound experience is there so that experience uh bring the what is the the knowledge of the state so we can say that we were there but without 
uh, without any discrimination. So if somebody asks how you were there, so what was your uh, uh, no, action there or what, what, what was your experience. So experience we can say but we cannot say how we were there. It means uh, we were there without any qualifications, without any attributions. So the attribution less state. So if somebody asks, you are a human being that experiencing, you are a human being there, you cannot say. Because we don't see human bodies there. Even our own body is not seen. So therefore, this uh, state is very peculiar in this experience. So no definition, no uh, distinction can be shown. Therefore it is aviveka, aviveka, completely in a different, uh, different experience. So maya saushuptam, it is called maya saushuptam. Maya, the word is very famous. It is a super power of consciousness or the active power of consciousness. That is called Maya. So the Maya can create anything, everything. So that creation is there. The mental creation, outside creation, all these creations are. And this is also a creation of Maya, this stage. And in that stage, the, uh, there is uh, this aviveka, this uh, ignorance, the ajnana is there. Therefore, it is called Maya Saushuptam. Maya Saushuptam. The Sushupti with Maya. Sushupti means deep sleep. Deep sleep is called Sushupti. So Maya is a super uh, power of consciousness, Ishwara, but uh, it is always there with the creation, the creative power. So Maya Saushuptam. And this Saushupti, as we already discussed in the last classes, Sushupti has uh, many things to teach us. The first thing is that our nature, what is our nature? So without conditions, without uh, uh, any form, our nature is formless. Our nature is conditionless, changeless. So all this, this Sutrupti experiences teaches us. If we can uh, correctly contemplate on the experience of Sushupti, we can easily understand what is our nature is. Therefore, in all the Upanishads, when Upanishads talks about uh, the nature of jiva, the individual soul. Upanishad takes us to the experience of Sushupti. In all the Upanishads it is like that. It says if you, if you understand the Sushupti, then you can understand your nature. So therefore, don't be too much attached and identified with the waking state and dream state. Because waking state and dream state both are with conditions. Therefore, the sushupta, the deep, uh, deep sleep is more, uh, more connected to the nature of Atma Self. So that is what it said, Abhiveko Maya Saushuptam.
So when we contemplate on all these three stages, as the seventh sutra said, you, we will have the experience of Turiya, the pure consciousness. Then obviously we can control our mind and sense organs. How? Because we have a uh, we have a knowledge of what the sense organs are and what the mind is, how intellect works, and how the self, our own self, is connected to these sense organs and all those things. So this understanding itself makes the mind very strong in dealing with all these senses. So therefore, the 11th Sutra says, Tritaya Bhokta Vireshaha Tritaya Bhokta. Tritaya means threefold, tried. It's called Tritaya. Bhokta, enjoyer, knower, experiencer, that is Bhokta. Viresha. It's a technical term. Vira, Viresha means uh, it, it can be translated as Shiva because Shiva's name is also Viresha. But here the experiencer, the individual soul itself is Vireshwara because he got the capacity to control the sense organs, the senses. The Viresha means who has, who can control the sense organs the senses and their activities. That is Viresha. So the technical term we used. It is a very famous uh, people uh, have the uh, no, name as a Viresha. Viresha and the So it's uh, connected to sense organs. So Tridaya Bhokta Viresha. Now the enjoyer means us, our own self. So we always feel we are the we are experiencing, we are enjoying. So the, we feel it. So this feeling is called enjoyer, bhokta. Actually, there is no enjoyer as such. The enjoyment is also attributed. How? The object is there, and the seer is also present there. Like the objects are there outside and sunlight is there and sunlight is reflecting the objects. Now, if we want to say, we can say that sunlight is reflecting or, or enjoying or receiving the objects. If we want to say, we can say it. It is also correct. But actually, nothing is happening there. The presence of light, which is the characteristics of light, shows the object there. Light cannot stop projecting objects. The, the characteristics of light, it will project the objects. Similarly, if mind brings some objects, some enjoyment, some sense, uh, sensual enjoyment. It is reflected there. So when it is there, the consciousness feels that it seems to be the experience. The feeling is the experience. Actually, consciousness is not experiencing anything. So this uh, uh, this process, what is happening, 
in our mind and consciousness, in relation with mind and consciousness, is called enjoyment. If one individual, one sadhaka, can discriminate this the enjoyer and the object of enjoyment as the mind is separate, their characteristics are different, then the enjoyment is only a false notion, it's an applied condition. In a condition you apply this, that enjoyment is there. In another condition you say, no, I don't enjoy. So they are all applied conditions. So this stage is called Viresha. Now, this individual has full capacity or full control over the functions of intellect, mind, sense organs. Now, whenever he wants to withdraw, he can withdraw. Whenever we want, he wants to act with these instruments, he can definitely do it. So this is a uh, very good stage of sadhana where you have full control. So to get into this level, the other practices are necessary because you cannot suddenly get into this. Sense organs has their own tendencies. It means they are programmed in a way to function. And each individual's sense organs are programmed in different ways. There is a little bit different. Some general functions are the same, but some differences are also are there. So this, uh, this goes together, uh, but uh, the sadhaka when he understands, so the my, sen my sense organs are working in such and such a way, so I have to be careful or I have to uh, change it or whatever he thinks. So he has to understand that and change it. So this is the practice of sadhana or we can say the effect of sadhana, the beauty of sadhana. That you are trying to understand the whole function of your uh, physical and physiological. So that is the viresha, tutradaya bhokta viresha. Now, if he get into this level of understanding, he is a master of his mind, master of his intellect and now he can do whatever he likes to do. And he will get many, many special qualities which is called siddhis. Because without this uh, sp uh, special achievement, people will not go after sadhana. If you don't have any achievement, what, why we are doing uh, your sadhana? No. So we have to uh, say something about it. So obviously when uh, this sadhaka is uh, in full control of mind, the mind will bring special qualities because our mind has so many qualities, supernatural qualities. But uh, unfortunately, uh, we cannot use them. We are unable to use them in normal sense. Why? We are attached to some uh, uh, actions and reactions of mind. So we give too much importance to some emotions. In that case, the real nature of mind or the real qualities of mind is uh, hiding or it is, it is not appearing for us. As I said, you are only the, no, what do you say, the applied enjoyer or appointed enjoyer. 
is not a real employee. You are appointed as enjoyer. So you are actually not enjoying. If we know that, then we can separate all the functions of mind from us. We won't be attached to a special function of mind. Then we can get into the deeper level of mind and then work with that. This is the uh, this is the special achievement sadhaka gets the wonders vismayo yoga bhumika vismayo yoga bhumika vismayo yoga bhumika so vismaya vismaya in sanskrit we can say wonders fascinating wonders that is called vismaya extraordinary powers that is vismaya what is normal is not called vismaya wonder wonder means it is extraordinary it is not normally seen so vismaya yoga bhumika yoga bhumika yoga this is the uh, the, uh, the experience of this stage is called yoga Bhumikaha stages. So, this sadhaka will get many, many wonders or wonder experiences in his yoga bhumikaha, in the stages of sadhana practice. The, back, uh, the background, uh, the preparation was the last sadhana, what we call Tridaya Bhokta Vireshwara. That was the last sadhana. Then from there it comes. So master of the senses. Once you are a master of senses, so then uh, you can do uh, deeper level of yoga sadhanas. Then we get these experiences, the vismayas, the wonders, fascinating wonders. Now, we will discuss some of the wonders for uh, just to encourage us for uh, practicing this. Itcha Shakti Ruma Kumari Itcha Shakti Ruma Kumari Itcha Shakti Ruma Kumari You see, these sutras are very mystic. You cannot go by word by word. So, word will be saying something else and the meaning we should take from the context. So, Icha Shakti Uma Kumari. So, after this he will get the willpower, the Icha Shakti. Icha Shakti is called willpower. So, his uh, desires will be fulfilled in no time. If we get this Siddhi, it would be wonderful in our life if our all desires uh, get fulfilled. Actually what happens, when this sadhaka reaches in this stage, in this enlightenment, he will hardly have any desire. That is what that is this means. I mean, he doesn't want anything. No. He is enjoying in himself. Atmarati, Atmananta. So he is enjoying himself. So in some time, in with some uh, reasons, he may have some desires. So that desire will be fulfilled. So there won't be, we cannot say there won't be no desires, but there, the desire which comes to him, will be reasonably correct or the desire with the, uh, the cosmic mind, the desire he is having will be connected to cosmic mind. He will not have the silly desires, so which can be uh, easily achieved by other means. So therefore, Icha Shakti is like uh, the Icha Shakti, the willpower of God, God Himself. So, Icha Shakti, willpower. 
So, therefore, no when people meet uh, Mahatmas, so they ask, you please pray for us, uh, you know, just uh, you remember us, all those they pe people say. Why? Because if he prays or he, he remember, then the uh, effect will come, the fruit will come. So they have a belief that. It happens also, sometimes it happens. If the karma and everything is together is okay, then it will happen. Sometimes they know it is not going to happen. But they will say, okay, I will do just like, because if, uh, if they cannot stop you, they will not stop you. Knowingly they will not stop you. So you go and do and then the reaction and the experience will come and you will learn yourself. So that is all. So, Icha Shakti, Icha Shakti is Uma. Uma, here it means the highest power of Shiva. Uma is the highest power of Shiva. Uma is the wife of Shiva. So, the highest power of Shiva. This Uma word for Parvati or Shakti is used in Shaiva Siddhanta very frequently. It has uh, many hidden meanings. Say, it's a mystic word, Uma. You know, we have a Om. Om, na, Om Pranava. It is called Pranava. That is in Shaiva Siddhanta and Vaish, uh, in Vaishnavism and everything is the Om is used. Om is very, uh, okay, the symbol of Hinduism we can say Om. But in uh, Shakteya Siddhanta, in Shakteya Sadhana, instead of Om, they use Uma. So Uma is also the same as Om. Uh, how you know, if you know how it forms. So we have in Om, A, U and Ma. So three syllables are there. A, U, Ma. A, U, Ma. Okay. So when we join this, A and U is joined as O. O. And the Ma is there, then O comes. So now, what we do, instead of uh, the first le letter uh, A, uh, A and U, you know, so we bring U first. U first and ma second and a last so it become u ma so u ma ma and a and a u ma is o and u ma and a is uma so the uma and o has uh, the same uh, pronunciation and same syllables and uh, same energy that is what they say so uma is Om, the, the Parashakti, the highest power of Shiva is called Uma. The Uma Maheshwara is a uh, Shiva. So, what, what the Sutra says, he will get the power of Uma, the highest power of Shiva that he will get. So, he is one with uh, the consciousness because Chaitanya Matma. So the consciousness is Shiva himself. Therefore, he gets that Uma level. <coughs> and then it says Kumari. The Kumari, said it is in short, it should be long. Kumari. So, Icha Shakti Uma Kumari. So, Kumari, we, we know the young girl, virgin girl. It is called Kumari in Sanskrit. So, before marriage, the young girl is called Kumari. So after marriage, we cannot call Kumari. The Kumara means before marriage. Kumari means before marriage. The virgin girl. So this Uma is virgin girl. It means it is the highest power without any form or without the division of Sattva, Rajas and Tamas. It is single. The virgin means single. So it is pure. So, Uma is pure. Therefore, the Icha Shakti is also pure. 
So this uh, sadhaga, this yogi will have the ichha shakti, the uh, willpower in the purest form. Therefore, what he thinks will happen? Like God has willpower that is in the purest form. The similarly, he will also, the sadhaga will also have the purest form of that power. So that is Kumari. So Icha Shakti Uma Kumari. So instead of saying the purest uh, uh, power or the highest power, it's, it is said Uma and it is pure, it is said Kumari. Because in uh, Shakti Siddhanda, these words are used for uh, to show these senses. Now, the next sutra, what is this body? So he will have a special kind of body. Drishyam shariram So he can make any types of body. Whatever body he wants, he can take. See, if we want, if we want uh, to fly, he will take the body of a bird and fly. It's possible. So, drishyam shariram. So, drishyam means visible object. It is called drishyam. Uh, the object of eyesight is called drishyam. And shariram means body. This is very famous. So, <coughs> so the outer and inner body, both type of bodies. The inner body is the mental body. It's the mind is body. The outer body, what we have, the physical body. And this uh, sadhaka can make any kind of body. So, drishyam shariram. That is one meaning. The another meaning, it can be shariram drishyam. So, Kshemaraja did both the translations. Drishyam Shariram, the all bodies will be object for this sadhaka. So, he, can, he will know all the objects. So, that is one meaning. And the second meaning is Shariram Drishyam. The Shariram, the body is always visible to him. It means he is not attached to that body. He is always feeling, I am separate from this body. So this is uh, in waking state. He is not in dream state or in another state. He is in waking state, but he feels, I am out of the body. It is a, uh, a kind of out of body experience. So, shariram, drishyam, drishyam, shariram. Now, what would be the benefit? The benefit would be, he will feel, he will feel himself as all-pervading. Because he thinks, the all the bodies are my bodies. The all the objects are in me. So this experience he will have. So why we are not having that now? The reason is, we are attached to this particular body. We never thought about the other body we are having. So we cannot think this is my body. We, we, we cannot think that. So we are attached to this body and therefore the mind has this frame carrying. Mind is always carrying this frame. So when we think about ourselves, we think about this body only. If something happens, if we forget our own body, so what would happen? Suppose we forget, we don't remember our, the, the shape of the body. Then the mind will, mind will be attached to any other body. This is one of the uh, special 
achievement siddhis in yoga shastra also is called parakaya para sharira pravesha para sharira pravesha the mind can enter to another body because it it can leave this body and enter to another body so this is it can happen and the proof for, for that is our dream state dream state no we never thought about this so in dream you are using a body is it you are using a body no you have a body there in some some sort of body is that body is this body no why because this body is sleeping in the bed and that body is running around that body is going here and there and doing uh, this and that all the actions are there so this body is uh, relaxing and sleeping and we are not using this body there so we have another body there okay and in that body also we are uh, performing all the actions in this body but we perform the same actions we are repeating there we may think that body is a uh, replica of this body no this is totally different why we say there is a body we can think that is a, can be a, just a thought process that is thought why we say there is a body because we perform all the actions there with the body as we perform here so both the bodies are the same because here also we sit and walk and eat and drink and sleep everything we do with the body the same actions are performed there it means we have some other bodies so that body is created by mind and there is a mind also so if body is there mind is there so mind body relation is also there sometimes you are planning something no in, in dream you are seeing you are sitting in a uh, in a place in a beautiful place and planning something uh, thinking about something so it means the mind is also there body is also there of course the prana is also there everything is there so you made a different world for your experience that is in that is mental but it is there it is there similarly this yogi can make a body by his thoughts and experience as we experience in dream he will actually experience all the experiences all the performances the difference is we have no control over dream but this yogi will have full control over the actions that is the difference the experience is uh, similar we can compare with the uh, dream state it is compared in uh, upanishads so this is the drishyam shariram the shariram drishyam in both ways he is uh, having a uh, uh, body as the cosmic in cosmic level and in individual level so he is uh, he, he can uh, think about all the uh, bodies and experience from any of the body he wants so this is a special achievement now people may think all these wonders are just uh, wonders uh, it has no uh, reality it cannot be experienced this is what people thinks when we talk about yogic uh, Uh, siddhis people don't believe in that because they don't have that they are unable to experience this is all just uh, talking that but it is not true uh, you see we have this experience we are not identifying it that's all so like a child or a uh, young uh, boy in boyhood or uh, in the younger stage of our mind we are simple 
we are only thinking about ourselves. I always give this uh, example uh, to uh, you know, understand how our mind can, atta- can be attached with other bodies and uh, not only one, many bodies. So first, uh, when the boy or uh, the, as a youth, he was single or she was single, then she or he got married. So now you see, in the first stage, he was only thinking about his body and physical problems or the qualities or whatever. He was only caring about himself, his body. Now he married. So he is thinking about the body of his wife also. So if something happens to wife, he feels that it is happening to me, us. No, that attachment has a connection there. Then after that when children come, again they have attachment with those bodies. So those bodies are completely separate. But if something happened to child, he feels, she feels that it is happening to me. And child is crying and the mother and father is also crying. Child is happy and father, mother, father is also happy. Now how it comes? Because your mind is extended. The extension of mind, extension of feelings, extension of emotions, you cannot say that it is there. So how you extend that? We don't know how we extend that. But through attachment, through connections. So you accepted that body, that person as yours. So when you accept that, it can happen. So, like our sannyasins, we don't have this because we cannot extend our uh, attachment like that. We don't have so much attachment. But we have attachment to the old world. We are not attached to a family or a, a person or two uh, bodies, one body or two body or three bodies. So, that is a different. If you we, if we have a, uh, if you are identifying the old world as yours, in which level you understand that, the reaction will come that way. So if I am thinking about myself and my existence, if I am thinking about the whole world, the existence of the world, the happiness of the world, so that makes a difference. So similarly here, the yogi will use his uh, knowledge, this deeper knowledge, for a good purpose. So he can have the many bodies if he in, in case of uh, what you say some uh, to fulfill some purpose. So he can have. Huh? Fifth Sutra. Ah, Uddhyamo Bhairava. How does this differ from the context? Is it like Bhairava and the 12th Bhairavi? Bhairavi. Yeah. Bhairavi. Yes. Bhairava and Bhairavi. And uh, that is the female power of Bhairava. It's called Bhairavi. So, Uddhyamo Bhairava. Bhairava. That is the appearance of uh, consciousness. That is a technical term they use, that's all. So, this is my own So, the, all the powers are Bhairavi. That is called Shakti Chakra. So, uh, there, there was one sutra, Shakti Chakra. The Shakti Chakra is there. The Chakra means the, we have seen no, the last sutra there. So, this is like uh, mm. The Vibhuti Pada. Vibhuti Pada, yeah. So the Vibhuti Pada is also uh, the same thing. They are talking about the same thing. Here, uh, the same thing, no? Even Vibhuti Pada or if you take Vedanta or any, any other yoga textbook, tantric books, the same thing. So when you get uh, this uh, mind, you will have all these uh, experiences. 
uh, even as uh, even a normal sadhaka gets many of these experiences. So it is possible. Uh, yeah. So, for example, there are these uh, activists, mm. or some people are naturally, like you say, you know, we can extend our mind to our family probably just uh. because of attachment. Uh. But there are people out there who are caring for much larger community, mm. right? Entire, like, you know, state or, you know, mm. mm. Are we saying that, you know, they are reaching some level of this city or is, is that different, just an emotional concept? Of course, they have a different level of emotions from the normal people. So they won't be attached to a family. If he is a, a real social worker, <laughs> he will, he will, we won't be attached to a family. So the training they are given is same. So you should detach from the family efforts and then work for social. But now the politicians or whatever with the social workers, they, we cannot uh, take in that category. But really that what, what you th uh, thought is correct. So uh, because they can extend their uh, emotions, their life to a wider society. That's, that's uh. huh. Now the next sutra is also uh, in relation with this only. So we can see the next sutra. Hridaye chitta sanghatta drishya swapadarshanam. Hridaye chitta sanghatta drishya swapadarshanam. Hridaye chitta sanghatta drishya swapadarshanam. To hridaye, the separation of words, hridaye chitta sanghatta drishya swapadarshanam. So, hridaye, the hridaya, the heart. So, the heart is the abiding place of consciousness. Why it is said so? Because whenever we feel, I am, I feel here. It is not here or not any other body parts. So, something is connected to heart. Actually, if, uh, if scientifically we say it is not here, the, all the feelings and emotions are here. Actually, we should touch here and say, "I am here." Uh, in in sim some cultures, they say like that, not touching here, touching here. Like I, 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 as a, I heard like that. Uh, in Japan, they touch here and say, "I am, I am in here." It's not here. Uh, this is correct because scientifically it is correct. The brain is everything. But we feel the emotions in heart. Now, why it is so? Because if emotions come, something hum, some thoughts or some something is there in the mind, then heart beats are up. So the feeling that we have is here, not here. So therefore, the heart is the abiding place of emotions as self. So hridaye chitta sanghattat. The Sanghata is means uh, the observation of mind or the union of mind. Chitta Sanghata. It means you are concentrating there. So Sanghata means Sanghata means connecting, joining. So Chridaye Chitta Sanghata. Drishya Swapa Darshanam. The appearance of the objects outside. The appearance of object is called drishya. And swapa means deep sleep. What he says he is not correct. Dreams of any visible object, not dreams. It is void, void of thoughts. So it means swapa darshanam. Swapa means deep sleep. Swapna means dreams. It, see, it's, uh, it, is, uh, uh, it is clear that this uh, translator is not very much familiar with Sanskrit words. Because the sa swapa and the swapna is different. Uh, swapa, generally swapa means deep sleep only. Sleep, sleep means deep sleep. The swapna is a variation of that. So, hridaye chitta sanghatta drishya swapa darshanam. 
so now for that practice achieve whatever you want achieve the desired the desired object so one can practice the emptiness of mind the empty your mind and meditate on that so that is rikta mana rikta chittam so this is a uh, this is the practice so try to empty your mind and then meditate on that then after a long practice whatever you think the object that is called drishya the observable object when it comes the object will be identified with you it means you will be identified with the object and the object will be identified with you so then if you want to uh, change your uh, mind people say you know to think about a better goal is a good uh, object for your life and think about that and always when you think about that your energy is dies and everything is changing so how it happens the same thing because when constantly we think about an object so mind take the form of that object so we will have a, an ideal for our work no or hero so always we choose a hero why it is so because if that hero the ideal is there in our mind we can easily practice that so we can identify it with identify with that hero that ideal and then practice like no the body builders people take weight and uh, muscles and they want to body build if you go to their rooms that practice room they you can have many photos of uh, mr world mr no mr all the misters and with the muscles and why they keep all those so daily they the morning evening and they see that so that uh, that frame is there in the mind so they get energy for the practice this is a very normal psychological thing the same thing is used here the first you detach everything remove everything from mind so empty mind in that mind you meditate and you will get the uh, what is the the deepest level of power the mental strength that uh, the last sutra what it said icha shakti will power then bring whatever you want so this is the process here so chitta sanghatta drishya swap darshanam appear as a form of consciousness here the chitta actually the chitta we will discuss later chitta is not only totally mind chitta is appearance of consciousness the first reflection of consciousness is called chitta so like a mirror has no forms it is formless now the something you know first light reflected there now mirror is seen as light we can say like no mirror is producing the light actually it is reflecting the light it cannot produce the light but the reflection seems to be the origin of the origin from that so this is how uh, the chitta is the chitta is not uh, producing consciousness chitta has no consciousness by nature but chitta is reflecting the consciousness as consciousness itself so therefore when we think about mind in modern science also they have no uh, separate uh, identification of self the self is mind only the mar- what is mind is self what is intellect that is self so i i i i where i say i i that is self so it, this mind and intellect combination seems to be acting like self why but the self consciousness is reflected in that so therefore chitta chitta means consciousness 
ta is added there. So where the consciousness is reflected, that is called chitta. That is the uh, what is the derived meaning of chitta. Hmm? Is the same as Vimarsha from the Dharma? Ah, yeah. Yeah, Yoga Darsha. Yeah, the same thing. So, Chitta, Sanghatta, Drishya, Swapa, Darshanam. So, here Drishya and Swapa should be separated. This is two different uh, uh, no, experiences. Drishya is observable object you see. In a empty uh, mind. So that empty mind is called swapa. Because in deep sleep, mind has nothing, no objects. So, empty uh, mind, you see the objects there. So, th this is how yogis get the special qualities. So, this, this we can practice. So, hritaye chitta samvit. And which part? Now, where we have to meditate? Now, we don't know where to meditate. So the meditation point is Hridaya, here. So here you have to meditate. This is the point where you can meditate. Therefore, Hridaya. So you want to uh, uh, get Samadhi. So this is the point. Sometimes we can meditate here also. This is related to mind's function. And this is related to emotions. So when we meditate on self, so we meditate here. That is what we say. Uh, some people play uh, this also like maybe from the dress. Ah. Uh, it's also one of the ways. Yeah. And um, some for some people, some object work. Ah. Some people chanting for some mantra also work. Yeah. So but as a beginner, what would be the right way of finding out what is the uh, correct object for you to perform? Yeah, you can as a beginner you can start from outside object. Concentrate on outside object. Uh, like uh, keeping a lamp or something like that or then you can come to the breathing you can concentrate, it is a very good concentration techniques and then slowly we can change into this this is a little higher level of you know, I can say it is a, even it is a, it is a normal only because in the, you can concentrate here when we are concentrating like this so here this is a one point Brumadhyaya uh, it is said and here the senses from this can meditate and breathe uh, because the prana and the mind has connections and it is always moving so we can meditate on that because there is some movement in the beginning mind cannot be still like that you know at once like we want to make mind still in one point is not possible so it, it needs to have some changes some movements so this uh, prana Breathing will help you. So there is some movements. Like that it is our practice. It is good. Okay, we will continue with this. Om Purnamataha Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudasyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vasishyate Om Shanti 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 Shanti